This is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is back by popular demand. She's known as the nutrition professor, Timory Hagenberger, and she is going to be making a delicious recipe. It's a seven layer dip, all plant-based, of course, which would be perfect for Labor Day if anybody's going anywhere, but if not, for your staycation at home, it's it's a wonderful recipe. And the recipe seven layer dip, which you often see at places like Costco, is just full of fat and animal products and delicious, but not so healthy. So here is her delicious plant-based healthy version of a seven layer dip. Please welcome back to the show, Tim Marie Hagenberger. I'm so happy to see you again. Thank you, Chef AJ. It's great to see you too. So this recipe is something that can be taken to a party for sure. However, we don't wait for that. We eat this recipe in my family. Probably I have it made every two weeks because it's a family favorite across everyone. And you may be thinking, how can everyone like the same recipe? Well, I will show you because this is all about options. So the first idea is the bean layer, right? So the bottom of the seven layer dip. And most people think maybe refried beans made with pinto beans. You can absolutely do that. You can make this as simple as you'd like, meaning you can go to the store, buy a can of refried beans, make sure it doesn't have any lard or any other additives that you don't want in there, or even easier, you can go to the store, get pinto beans with no salt added, and then mash them. There you go, okay? You can add some peppers, you can go crazy with your seasonings, but that could be a base. Or like many of your viewers love their Instant Pot. So I usually make this with pinto beans because my kids love the homemade refried beans, unrefried, right, unfried. But I made it a couple of weeks ago with black beans from dry. And they said, actually my son, who usually doesn't have a lot of words to say about the food said, Oh, I like this even better than with the Pinto. So because the Instant Pot is not exactly instant, it does speed things up, but there's no way that I could cook something during our time together and have it ready. So I started this, actually, I soaked the beans last night. You don't have to, but I knew ahead that I was gonna do this. So I soaked the beans and then I got this going a little while ago and it actually finished cooking, which is a 35 minute in the Instant Pot, 27 minutes ago. So with that Instant Pot now, the, what I see on the view is L027. And that means it has passed the time that it was done. And now it's 27 minutes after. Now, when you use the Instant Pot, sometimes you want quick release. And that's when you don't want something to continue cooking. So if we were steaming a vegetable, sometimes you can just put it on. I've seen Chef AJ do this too. You put it on zero. And as soon as it gets up to temp, then it's done. And then you release that steam. Otherwise it'll overcook the vegetable. But in this situation, since we started with beans, I'm happy to let it go. And that would be natural pressure release, which means I don't touch the nozzle until when I do touch it, nothing really happens. All of the steam and all the pressure has escaped. So I'm gonna get into that in just a minute, but I wanted to show you the before part. So I use this strainer. I got this at Ikea. I think it was $4.99 or something ridiculously simple price, a very small price, but I use this all the time and it has little feet on the bottom and strainers are excellent. And I have many and I'll show you when I use them in certain ways, but I just soak these overnight in water and then I rinse them several times. So we're going to pretend like this vessel here, this um, bowl is the instant pot liner. Okay. Because I don't have two. I know some people have more than one instant pot, but I do not. So I'm putting the beans in here. And then what I would add to them to make this amazing, tasty, savory, nutrient dense version of the refried beans or unfried refried beans is a red onion. And as you have heard me before, there is a difference between the different onions when it comes to nutrient 
content. So red, purple, this is gonna be the highest level. Do you always have to use these? Well, of course not. I mean, this is flexible, but when you can, I always do. And especially in a recipe like this, if someone, I mean, you're never gonna see it. So if that was, if color was a detractor, for me, it's an attractor when I see color because I know the phytonutrients, but you don't have to worry. You can put that right into this. So I have managed to leave my knife on the other side of the kitchen. So hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Now, all we're doing, one of the other beautiful things about this recipe, because we're going into the Instant Pot, is we don't have to mess with cutting certain sizes because ultimately we're either going to smash, right, or we're going to use a um, stick blender. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So all I wanna do is take the very top layer of the onion skin, of course, when they're wet, they're a little harder to deal with, um, but you don't wanna to go too deep because that those phytonutrients are nice and concentrated in the very outer level um, layers as well as near the root. So you don't want to um, cut that end out. So all I'm gonna do actually is I quartered them and cut them one more time, that's it. So you don't have to worry about crying, you don't have to run any of that. Now the other piece that I wanna make sure we talk about is garlic. So while you could certainly use garlic that has already been um, minced, you know, sometimes we can get that at the supermarket or Costco or what have you. I also like to use fresh and that mixture is nice. Um, and one of the things we have to remember about garlic is we wanna crush the cells, the cell walls, so that the enzymes can mix and do their job to create the cancer fighting agents. So if we were just to press garlic into a hot pan, which is how my Nona used to make her sauce. She would have the onions cooking and then she'd press in the garlic, but that doesn't give the garlic enough of a chance to form these enzymes that and the compounds, which once the compounds are formed, they are heat stable. Um, wow, this, is, this garlic is making me tear up. That is crazy. Sometimes garlic is so strong, it can make you, woo, can make you tear up, not just onions. But whenever I think about that, people say, oh my gosh, how can you handle, you know, all this onions and garlic? Whenever I cry, the cancer is crying. So that's an indication that they're really packed with phytonutrients. So what I'm gonna wanna do, I smash those garlics. And actually for these beans, since it's gonna sit, I can just drop them in there. But if I have other garlic I'm gonna use, like today I'm gonna use garlic to make a, um, guacamole, a special guacamole, I'm going to go ahead and press that garlic now because I want it to sit for at least 10 minutes before I do something with it. And I'm not going to cook the beans now. I just want to show you this. So that's why I let the garlic um, just sit in there. So I'm going to smash a couple more and you want to smash with the bottom of the knife, not the part that could hurt you. Okay. So with the heel of your hand. So you can use a garlic press, that's fine too, but I'm just gonna leave that garlic sitting on that, um, sitting on the plate until we're ready for it. But if you can think about that, if you have any garlic to do for a recipe, do that first and let that sit. The only other things we need to add to these beans, we've got the garlic, we've got the onions, are the spices. So this is completely up to you, but the kind of trio that I always use are smoked paprika, coriander, and cumin. So those are really great, you know, basic um, spices that are Mexican flavored. Now you can add oregano, you can add all kinds of other, you can add cayenne. This also would be a great place to add peppers. So if you love peppers, you can add those. Right now we have a lot growing in our garden and I'm gonna show you a few when we get to that. Um, but it's really very open as far as what else you add. And then the last piece before the water, cause we're gonna add five and a half cups of water. And this was one pound of black beans. Um, we are gonna add a little bit of vinegar. 
So two tablespoons of vinegar, and that may sound strange, but it actually is fantastic in there. But you wouldn't want that vinegar to hit the garlic before it had time, right, to, to do its thing. So no citrus, vinegar, or heat for that garlic until it has had at least 10 minutes. And again, that's ideal. If you don't do that, it's fine. But if we're trying to maximize the nutrient content, then that's what we're thinking about, okay? So that's all that it takes to do these beans. So let's do a reveal and see what they look like by the power of YouTube and television that we can actually see what they look like. So I'm gonna move this bowl. And now when I turn the nozzle, I hear nothing. That means all the pressure has been released. So this is truly natural release and it'll let me open it. And the steam obviously comes out. Now the inner liner is very hot. So I wanna make sure that my kids say I have asbestos hands, but still it's good to use protection. Now, this, these beans are gonna have a lot of water depending on how much they soaked you're gonna want to potentially strain some of the water. And what I like to do is I like to just strain it over a bowl so that I can save that liquid. And when the beans, if they get too thick, I can add some of that liquid back. Or I can use that liquid for a soup base. Um, you can do a, a um, sauce base. You can, it's, it's really good because it's full. It's infused with those spices and the, the garlic and the onions. And so, and it's basically, it's the aquafaba, right? That we, we love, but it's very much seasoned, right? So we don't want to try to make anything sweet with it, but that's a good way to keep this. Um, I'm actually going to go, it's always better to go with bigger bowls. So if you ever, my husband has said before, why do you have such gigantic bowls? it's always easier to use a bigger bowl than a smaller, than a bowl that's too small. So I'm gonna pour in the beans so you can see how beautiful they are. So all of that liquid now is in the bowl, but I want some of it to come back in and I want all the onions. So now I have that liquid and I can add it back as I need, okay? So you have two options, well, at least two options now. So you want this to be creamy because you're doing this as the bottom of the dip. So you can either use a potato masher or you can use a stick blender. So I actually like using the stick blender. Um, so it has, you just have to be very careful never to touch it when you have your, when it's plugged in. Oh my gosh, I hurt myself very, very badly several years ago. And now I know never, ever, ever mess with that blade if it's plugged in, even if I think I'm going to trust myself. So now I'm going to work on it a little bit. it's a little foggy, but you can see we're getting some texture. So I'm going to add in a little bit of the broth because I think it's a little too thick. And again, this broth, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's like black bean soup, right? And so very tasty. Okay, so we can see we're looking like a nice refried bean. And this is, um, if you like it a little chunky, and that's, I actually like it a little chunky. So I'm just gonna do a tiny bit more and then we'll be good. Oh, it smells so good. I wish that you could smell it or taste it. 
you were here, you would definitely be able to. Okay, so that's it for our bean layer. So I'm gonna let this cool because you actually want, when you're making this, this is served as, well, you know, it's traditionally served as a cool dip. So I would definitely want to put this in a shallow container. That's one area that a lot of people make um, mistakes when it comes to new, to food safety, specifically, and I've spoken about it with my students for years and years, is that they end up leaving food in deep containers. And I've been to people's homes where they open the fridge and there is a full stock pot of sauce with meatballs and sausage and it's in there for hours and hours. And it takes so long for the inside temperature to get into that, to get below the danger zone, that bacteria is just going like crazy. So whenever you have anything that you wanna cool down, you wanna move it into something that's shallow. So ideally, we would put it into the vessel that we're gonna use for our dip, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Now, one of the reasons why I love this dip so much is because it's so versatile. You can put it into any size container, you can any shape container, and you can make as much or as little as you want. So here, I'll show you, here are several options, right? We have pie plates, we have square containers, we have um, rectangular, so I think I'm gonna settle on this, okay, this Pyrex. And there's also another option that we're gonna talk about too at the end. But this is a perfect way for the beans to cool. So then I'm gonna just take these beans and this is a good consistency. But again, when you, when this cools, it will thicken even more. So we can, if you're thinking, oh, that's a little too thin, it will thicken a bit. And if you would, I would, uh, I would rather have it too thick and then be able to add water than if you ended up making it really thin. If you made the beans really, really thin, then I would probably recommend having that as soup and making some more beans. Now, you don't have to do black beans or pinto beans. You can do any kind of bean. And I think the last time I was with you, I had mentioned I have a friend who grows 54 different varieties of beans. So don't let, you know, oh, I don't have black beans or I don't have pinto beans stop you. You can do any kind of bean. So here we go. So this is our first layer. And we're just going to let that sit while we go on and do some more. Okay, so I'm gonna take this wonderful black bean soup aquafaba and I'm gonna make it into probably a soup base um, or I can cook rice in it or quinoa. Um, I can do all kinds of things with this later. Okay, now the next layer that we can talk about is corn layer. So you can, and again, lots of different options with the corn layer. So to start, easiest, you know, when I talk about um, in the foodie bar way, my cookbook, every bar has a basic bar. And that's just, you know, when my students say, I don't have time, I don't have any experience in the kitchen, I don't have money. So I say, okay, let's go with the basics. So the very basics, if we had this um, seven layer dip as a bar, which it probably will be in a new, another, you know, future edition of the foodie bar way. We would say frozen corn. So, and then a little level above that is organic, right? If you can get frozen organic corn, I usually, my go-to is Trader Joe's if I have one close to me, um, but it doesn't have to be just the supermarkets that have the um, organic frozen corn if possible. Now, could you use fresh corn? Yes, fresh corn when it's in season, excellent, excellent choice. Now, fresh corn is typically gonna have a little more water. So you're gonna hear me say at each of these level, each of these layers that you don't want a lot of excess water because then when you make the dip, 
the next day you'll see more water that gathers, which is okay. It's not bad. It's just, you may have to drain that off. Um, but if you use fresh corn, what I would recommend is then to use a sieve where you will let it drain. So I have the peas for another um, layer and it's, I just have the little sieve right here, the little strainer. So you could definitely do that with the corn. And if there was extra liquid, do not throw that away. That would be wonderful to use in, again, any kind of soup. You could use it as a base, part of a base for a salad dressing or a sauce. Um, I don't like to throw something away that has good potential, not only with flavor, but also of nutrients. So with the corn, there's a little paper towel here because I rinsed it because it was frozen and I wasn't, it wasn't quite thawing fast enough, but we've got the corn in here. Now, options with the corn, basic, right? The basic bar would be using a seasoning and then lime, zest and lime juice. So I'll grab some lime here. Now, whenever we use citrus, you want to roll whoo, that one flew right out. That did not. I think it got scared about the microplane. Oh, it just jumped right off my cutting board. Okay, so here's my lime and I crushed it to try to crush the cell walls to get it ready for releasing more juice. Microplane. We've already rinsed, right? So the remember you always want to use the zest. It can help reduce skin cancer. And it gives this punch of flavor. So we're actually gonna use limes twice today, but the first is with the corn. Now I was mentioning that this is the most basic version, which we're just adding seasonings, lime juice and lime zest. But you could also very easily start with onion and peppers. And if you cooked onions and peppers and then added some garlic, some seasonings that we're gonna talk about and then the corn and let it just cook through and let those flavors come together, that would be a fabulous corn layer. So that would be raising the bar, right? So you don't have to do it that way, but how cool is it to be able to have different options um, when you feel like it and when you, you know time allows and uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, so now we've zested. Now we're ready for squeezing. Now, I think I might have mentioned this before, but I am a, like, I, there's a couple of things that I love in the kitchen. I'm a scraper girl, and you know, that's my superhero name is, you know, super scraper. But I also love zest, zesting, of course, with the microplane, but also squeezing citrus juice. So I have several of these, and I have found the reamers, in my opinion, to be better than the um, presses. I break the presses and I don't know if it's just because I'm trying to get every little drop, you know, of the citrus out, but I've broken many. So you go back to wood, which this is not going to break. So that's what I'm going to use. This one I wanted to show because this is so cute and fun. You know, I am a little sucker for some of these gadgets, but this one is nice because you can squeeze and it'll give you the amount. So I have two tablespoons, three tablespoons. So it kind of self measures. Um, but I go back to this really good tool, right? And the microplane was actually a woodworking tool. So I grew up not only cooking with my grandparents, but in the garage with my dad. And he would always teach me how to do all kinds of things, including how to use woodworking tools and lathes. And so this would be something that we would use when we were making something out of wood. Okay, and I have to do a shout out, Chef AJ. My mom and dad are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary on Sunday. And I'm so proud of them. They are plant-based. I got them going in 2012 when I took them to McDougal. I took my dad to McDougal for a 12 for a 10-day McDougal. And from then on, they have completely changed their diet. And they are the friends in their friend group who are always riding their motorcycles. They are always out there, not held down by any doctor's appointments. They are just beep, beep, see ya. And that 
I'm just so excited because so many people look forward to retirement, but then are so sick that they can't enjoy it. Um, but they are doing the opposite. And they met at 15 and a half on the beach in Santa Monica. And all these years later, they're still totally happy and healthier than they've ever been, um, which is so exciting. As a child, it's so nice to know that your parents are healthy and taken care of by themselves. You know, I'm happy to help them whenever they need, but it's, it's such a, um, it's such a gift to us that they're taking care of themselves. So didn't even think I was going to talk about that with corn, but anyway, now my son is, um, he loves spices. Austin is the spice guy. And even when he was a little one, he would, I was one way that I got him to try things is I'd say, Austin, I did, things just don't taste right quite right. And he'd say, okay. And he'd open up the cabinet doors and he'd pull out all the spices and then he'd, you know, play around in there. So he actually invented this Austin Smoky Spice Blend. And it's on my website and it's in the cookbook. Um, but it, there's no salt in it and it has lots of flavor and it's a little spicy now because you, the recipe, you'll have the recipe, right? Because it's on the website and in the book, you can change the spice level. So if you say, whoa, that cayenne was too much, then leave it out or cut it down. That's the beauty. You have complete control. So I'm going to add some of Austin Smoky Spice Blend to the corn. And don't forget about the idea that I gave you for doing it with, um, you know, cooking the onions and the peppers and the garlic and then adding the corn because that's, that takes it to another level, but this is going to be excellent. Now, speaking of Austin, he loves the corn. That's his favorite layer. So everybody in the family has a favorite layer and Austin's is the corn. So he'd be happy if I doubled the corn or tripled the corn. Um, but then my husband, he likes the next layer and the next layer would be the guac. Okay. Now, so it used to be with my husband that there was never enough cheese that was actually the mantra before we went plant-based with them, with the kids and my husband was never enough cheese, never enough cheese. And then now I think he'd probably be never enough guac, right? So, because he just absolutely loves it, which I'm happy to do that switch. <laughs> More than happy to do that switch. So for the guac, I am going to give you a new recipe that you, unless you have the cookbook, you don't have it yet. And it's called greeny guac, green e guac. So this, because gua avocado is fabulous, um, but it's a pretty calorie dense fruit, right? So it has, you know, quite a few grams of fat, although lots of fiber. So it's an excellent choice, but we don't want to be sitting there eating avocado after avocado, but we do love the flavor and the texture. So what we're going to do today is, and again, these kind of recipes, you don't tell people what's in there. You just serve it and they say, oh, wow, that was fantastic. You don't come out with, yeah, well, do you not want to know what the rest, what the ingredients are? Because it scares people, but they shouldn't be scared. Peas, right? That's what we're going to use. Green peas, green avocado. We're going to put them together and they're never going to know. All right. Even for those people out there that are, I don't like peas. It'll taste like guac. Now, I want to be able to plug in my food processor. So I'm going to move around. I don't have arms long enough to reach all the way around my island, but I will do this. Now, for the food processor, I, I am not sponsored by anyone, but I talk about this food processor over and over and over and over and over again with my students because I have several that I've purchased throughout the years and some of them are very expensive and they're a hassle to clean. It depends on you know how many crevices and, and some of them don't do that great of a job. This baby was, I think I ended up getting it for $28 or something. It is the Hamilton Beach 70740. And I know, like, you know the model number? Yes, because this little thing 
is just the engine that could. It just keeps going. And it's very simple to use. Um, it's very light. It actually sounds kind of like a piece of junk. It's really, you know, really high pitched, but it works like a champ. And it's got to be, oh, mine is at least three years old, at least. And I use this thing all the time. So we used it in the previous demo when I made acai bowl, which was so tasty, <laughs> so yummy. Um, but we're going to use the same blade, which is the S blade. So it also has a round blade that is a slicer or a grater, depending on which side you flip it to. But the S blade is what we're going to use now. I'm going to go plug this in. So I'll be right back. Okay, so with this recipe for the greeny guac, we want to make sure that we are pureeing the peas before we add the avocado because we want that to be really creamy instead of putting everything together and then just beating up that avocado. So we're going to put the peas and this is a relatively big avocado. So I'm putting in a cup and a half of peas, but the recipe that's right down in the show notes that Chef AJ put there for you has a cup of peas. But again, this is really flexible. I don't want, you know, this is, when I think of cooking and I think of the foodie bar way and I think of the way I do things, I think of fun, flexible, and my, one of my favorite, filling, right? So we want to be able to eat and we want food that's going to feel satisfying. So that is exactly what's happening here. So if you have a little less peas, a little more peas, it's really flexible. Now we're adding the garlic. Now we already crushed, you know, or smashed this garlic a little while ago. So we're good to go. So it calls for one. Yeah, I'm going to put in two. The Italian in me, you know, we don't hold back on our garlic. And then a scallion. So one thing that I wanted to talk about with scallions is washing them. Many people just rinse them under the sink. Okay, they're done. Oh, no. So there's can be a lot of dirt. And so I always open up each of the pieces and run water deep inside. And then I look where they come together and make sure there isn't any dirt because they can have quite a bit of sand. And often, and like in this recipe, we're not cooking it. So we want to make sure that it's very clean. Another thing that we hear about when I hear about when I look at recipes and see is they'll say, oh, just the white. No, no, no. The whole thing. The only thing you don't use is the little tiny root bottom. So I don't like wasting food as you've gathered. So I am going to just chop these roughly because again, we're going into the food processor. So we're not using a blender for this. And that's actually something that I can mention. A lot of my students ask me, well, what's the difference between, why would you get a food processor if you have a blender or vice versa? The joy of using a food processor is that you don't have to use liquid. So when I put this lid on and pulse it, I can do that without adding liquid. If I put that into a blender, then especially if it wasn't a high powered blender, then everything would just kind of go to the side and the blade would just spin. So you'd have to add liquid and then the texture is going to be a lot thinner, which is not what I want. So, so far I have the peas, I have the garlic, the scallion, we have some fresh cilantro. So I have washed, I have rinsed very well the cilantro. I usually deal with my herbs in one of two ways. Either I put them in ice water bowl with ice water filled to the top, let any residue or any kind of um, little sand or whatever go to the bottom. And then I put it in my salad spinner and then I get the, all of the water out and then I'll put it in towel, like a clean dish towel or paper towel. And then I put that in um, the refrigerator until I'm ready to use it. Or I treat it like a vase. So I treat it just like cut flowers. So then I put that right there and then it'll stay really 
fresh. So that's what I want to do right here. Now we have a house full of kids that are also in Zoom and um, they are doing class right now. So if you hear someone back there, my daughter is trying to take a Spanish test. Okay, so the cilantro, now can you use the stems? Yes, are the stems full of nutrition and flavor? Yes, okay, so just gonna roughly chop right in there. And if you are thinking, I don't like cilantro, it tastes, it doesn't taste right to me. It tastes like people sometimes say it tastes like soap. Then use parsley, that's fine. Use whatever sounds great to you. Use fresh oregano. We have oregano growing in the front yard. We have all kinds of herbs. So we've got the cilantro in there. Time for some more lime. So that's a key. Um, to a good guacamole. Now I added the scallion. So scallions are a, in the onion family, in the allium family. Could you use red onion in there? No question. Could you even use leek in there? Absolutely. Leeks will hold a lot of sand. So you really want to make sure that you soak those after you slice them to get the sand out from underneath the layers but you could be very flexible. Could you use shallot? Yes, definitely. I don't use a lot of shallot because it's typically more expensive, but you could without question. Could you use elephant garlic? Yes. I mean, the options are just plentiful. Okay, so I've got the zest. And the zest is gonna add a little bitterness too. So if you have found, if you're making different recipes and you add a lot of zest, you may taste a little bit of bitterness. So I'm gonna add some lime. And when you shop for limes, so last night I was looking for limes for today and my eyes always go to the biggest limes, but they also then I go for the heaviest. So when you're buying citrus, you always want to go with the heaviest of the citrus. That means they're full of juice, full of water. So that's what I look for. And some limes, I know you've had those limes where you're squeezing and there's like two little drops of juice that come out. This is actually, these are really good limes. So I'm going to start with half a lime instead of a whole one. Now, do I have anything else that I need? Oh, tomato. So I happen to have some amazing cherry tomatoes that are growing in my front yard. So we, um, oh my gosh, we bought these, we bought six tomato plants, six cherry tomato plants. And they have, I mean, it is a bumper crop after bumper crop after bumper crop. I am just thrilled beyond belief. So I'm gonna add, Actually, I'm not even gonna cut them up, add cherry tomatoes to it. Now, if you, again, were worried about the liquid, you could, you never wanna throw away the seeds or the water. There's actually really nutritious um, benefit, really nutrient benefit, lots of nutrient nutrients in the seeds and the water. But if you don't want things too liquidy, save those for a salad dressing, again, or a soup or something else, okay? Don't throw those away. But this'll be great to start. Now, notice I'm putting everything in except for the avocado. We wanna wait on that. And actually, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of cayenne um, because we like things a little bit spicy. And you could add cumin, coriander, right? All of the different spices and the smoked paprika, of course. Okay, so let's see. So I am going to use a scraper and make sure it's coming down. One of the benefits of the smaller um, like the magic bullet and some of those, the little, the little ninjas, is that you can make a small amount. If you try to make a small amount in a large food processor, it there won't be enough to keep things moving. Let's see 
here. Now I want to go fairly smooth on this. I definitely don't want any whole peas because that would be a giveaway. Okay, so I think we're looking pretty good in there now. So let's um, add the avocado. So when you shop for avocados, you always wanna make sure, and I actually took it out without even mentioning it, but you wanna make sure it has the little nub in there that was from the tree because that will prevent air from going in. So if you are looking for avocados at the supermarket or at the farmer's market, and even if you have to buy them in bags, look for the one, the bag that has the most of the avocados with the little nub still in there. Oh, look how beautiful. And you never know, but that's one way you can, you can tell. So you can try to um, get it with the little top already in there, still in there. And then to take out the pit, that was an easy one. So we are gonna use the whole avocado. Again, you could do to your liking, less peas, more peas, more avocado, less avocado, but you'll be amazed how this stretches the avocado um, and will make quite a bit of guacamole. Okay, so we've got my little, everybody talks about these. I've had them for years. These little Tovalo scrapers are very, very helpful. Now, if we want, if you like your guacamole chunky, then this is where we just will pulse a little bit because we just want that avocado um, just mixed in a little bit. If you want it smoother, then you go longer. And what's fun about this is that then you can see there's avocado pieces and people will say, oh yeah, of course, this is guacamole. And it is, it's just greeny guac, that's all. And the peas add more protein, which we don't have to worry about protein, but it's just nice to get it from a variety of sources as we do with plant-based foods. So, and peas, the other benefit to peas are they're much cheaper um, than avocados, depending on the time of year, and you have them accessible in your freezer. That's one of the other benefits of this recipe. And actually guacamole is very freezable. So you can even purchase it frozen. So you could basically use out of season, you can use every, the peas from the freezer, the avocado, actually we even, we were talking about this at one of my meetings that I do with my students that we found now at Costco, they're selling avocado frozen. So it, you could freeze, if you have a bumper crop of avocado, you could freeze the avocado and then you could make this any time of year. Okay, so we've got this. Now, this is definitely something I would taste because then at this point I can add more of the seasonings or more of the um, lime. I like a little more lime. So I'm gonna add, if I don't make a mess of this. Okay, Woo. add a little more lime juice. All right, and let's see, maybe a little cumin. All right, I'm gonna add a little more of cumin. And cumin and coriander. I find people that say, oh, I don't like cumin, but they like coriander. So find what you like. Okay, excellent. All right. So now we have the guac that is done. I'm actually gonna just leave it in there. Um, okay, so now the last parts that we have to this recipe include the top layers. 
So what we have, normally we have tomatoes as one. So I'm gonna cut some um, cherry tomatoes to put on top, but we also have scallions as a, as a topping and olives are normally on top. But the issue with olives are that they are high in salt. So if you're trying to limit your sodium intake, then a little tiny bit may be something, but what if you're an olive person and you just can't eat just one olive? And when you open the can, you keep eating olives, even if you only use a few for the recipe. Well, that wouldn't be a good idea because they are packed with salt. So I have an option for you because this is all about options. And that is to play with radishes. So radishes are super high in water, but they're really crunchy and they have a lot of structure. And so they are filling. So that's what we're gonna work on next. So I'm just cutting a little bit of tomato here for one of our toppings. And then I am going to show you what we're gonna do with the radishes and then then we'll get into the scallions and just the last couple pieces and the salsa. I'm gonna give you a couple suggestions about salsa. Okay, so let's talk about these little babies. Now you can find radishes that are all different colors inside, outside, there are black radishes, there's all different kinds. Some are really spicy. So if you are someone who loves spice and you're missing that through this transition to plant-based, radishes can be your friend. If you add them to salad, they'll give you that kick um, and it's another vegetable. So again, the more the merrier. But once you've had one radish, doesn't mean you've had all the radishes. They, they taste very different. And I even have on my website, I have a daikon radish recipe and the daikon's the large white radishes. And I have a miso soup with daikon and that is excellent. And I have a video of me making it for California Bountiful TV, but we went shopping for the daikon and then we used it in a miso soup. So you can use it in a variety of places. And I have been, we had a foreign exchange student from Germany last year. And she, when we were at her house, we were fortunate enough to meet her the summer before. And at their house, they sliced thin radishes and they put lemon juice on top and a little sprinkling of chili pepper. And that was a normal hors d'oeuvre in Germany. And they love radishes. So when she was here, I bought a lot of radishes and I just have them sliced up and I add them to salads and she just enjoys them with lemon juice. But for this recipe, I thought, you know, I think it would be really fun to have little pieces, little diced pieces that were marinating a bit in orange juice or lemon juice if you wish but if you wanted a little bit of a different flavor some fresh orange so I bought some fresh orange when you cut with a knife you want to make sure and I may have told you this before but if someone hasn't seen it you pinch the blade and then wrap your fingers around a lot of people hold from far back on the on the handle and then they don't have the control. So when you do it this way, you have much more control. So we can chop these radishes as small as we would like. I'm just gonna chop up a few. And I have been going nonstop. Is there any questions, AJ, that have come up? Actually, you know, they're just really mostly comments about how what a wonderful teacher you are. But I did write down two questions that I saw. Okay. One was from Diana asking when you were talking about corn, if you used organic and non-GMO corn. Yes, I do. I do. Great. It's so easy to find now, you know, the frozen organic corn and something like that where I think it's important for us to realize how our food choices at the supermarket are votes. You know, so every time we spend money, we're voting for the type of food that we want to have options available for us. So when we ask, can you guys please carry organic corn? And if they hear that over and over and over again, and when they sell it, you know, when they have it in the freezer section, we buy it then they're gonna get that message that there's demand. So I think 
a lot of people when they're starting out transitioning, they're afraid to make, you know, I don't know, to make people feel uncomfortable and to like, oh, you don't have to do anything special for me and it's okay. I'll just deal with whatever. But I think we really need, especially in a consumer situation, I think we really need to stand up for ourselves and ask, at least ask so that they're hearing, gosh, we're hearing so many customers asking for, you know, organic corn or what have you. Um, so that's my view on the organic and, you know, organic is better for everybody, the planet, the workers, everybody. Um, and we are starting to see more options, but it's only because people are buying them. We're asking and we're buying. So that's why we're seeing more. Another and, question. You yeah. Said. Pamela said, how long did you cook the beans in the instant pot? Oh, 35 minutes. So it, I have an electric instant pot, which you saw. Um, if you do a pressure cooker, like an old school kind of pressure cooker on the stove, maybe 30 minutes, but most of, um, most people nowadays, they're getting some kind of like something like an instant pot. And so 35 minutes. And that's in the show notes as well down below. I think the only thing I didn't say in the show notes was it was a pound of beans. Um, so that was it. So I have these radishes and now I just have an orange. I don't buy juice. So I don't have orange juice. I don't need orange juice because I have oranges. <laughs> so that's something that... Um, Whenever possible, you want to use the whole fruit. Obviously, in this, um, you could ch chop up the orange and just have the orange with, with this. It may release a little too much liquid. So I would use this, though, to put, um, oh, I'll just cut it up and eat it, right? It doesn't, honestly, yeah. It smells really, really good. Those are navel oranges. So I'm going to add a little spice to this. And again, I told you we like spice, but if you're not a fan of spice, you can maybe add a little black pepper. And so we'll just mix that around. I don't want to cling on this bowl and bother your ears. Okay, so now we'll let that sit. So this could be easily a replacement for the, not even necessarily a replacement, but for the olives. So we're getting a little different flavor and more nutrition. And they are packed with water. We talk about the importance of calorie dilute foods and radishes. I believe when I worked in dialysis, we had a patient who gained a bunch of weight every weekend. He would gain a bunch of weight and we couldn't figure out what was going on. And we said, well, are you drinking water? Are you, you know, in the middle of the night drinking? And he said, no, 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 we're measuring everything. He said, but I've been eating radishes like crazy. And we looked it up. There was another dietitian and I, 93% water. So it doesn't seem like it, like a grape, you know, it's full of water, but radishes are full of water. Okay. We've got scallions to put on top. And then we're going to talk about salsa. So are we, AJ, are we doing okay on time? Do you have another one that you need to run to right no, away? I, I think, thank you so much for asking. It's not till two o'clock. So if you need to take more time, please okay. feel free because we love watching you cook. Okay, perfect. Then I will I'll just take what a little bit more time because I would like to be able to show you about the dippers. That's actually something that a lot of people, um, they just think, well, they can't think beyond, you know, the C-H-I-P-S. Well, we're going to take you well beyond those. We're not even going to talk about those. We have lots of other options. So scallions, again, never, ever throw away the green. We want the white and the green. Okay. I don't know who made the rules a long time ago about peeling everything. And, you know, it's like, no, no, you don't. You don't throw away this good food. Okay. Now... Salsa. Actually, let's let's talk about salsa. You could in the cookbook. So in the cookbook, there's a smoky corn recipe. There's the greeny guacs. And there are also options for making your own salsas and several different versions. You can do that. You can use the food processor. You can simply do peppers, which I have. You can do tomatoes, onion, garlic, and some lime and then adding some spices like cumin and cilantro. Or if you wanna buy a salsa, you can purchase a salsa. Now, many salsas are high in salt. 
So you want to look for the rest for the ingredient list, but also you're going to want to look at the nutrition facts panel. So I have one that um, traders has one that is a no salt added. So salt is not one of the ingredients. And this one is actually a really good, it's a fire roasted tomato salsa. So you can use this in place of making your own or you can make your own or if you have another option that you enjoy. But what I would recommend, because again, some salsas can be really watery and we don't wanna add extra water to this recipe. I would use the sieve unless it's a very thick salsa and then use that water to make the base of a salsa vinaigrette. I, I might have to come back and, ha and show you how I make my salsa vinaigrette. Um, I actually have a couple other recipes up my sleeve that I want to share with you. Oh, my hands are so wet that they're not, let's see, the little trick, right? To get underneath, let's see if it's gonna let me. There we go, pop that little baby open. So this is actually a fairly thick salsa, but a lot of the salsas are gonna be watery. And so if they are, you wanna catch that extra water and save it, but you don't want it on the dip, okay? So this is actually a really good option. So now I think we have all the parts. Now, speaking of that, I am going to assemble a dip right here, and then we're gonna do the dip, the dippers, but, you could set this up. One of my favorite ways to do this is to set it up as a foodie bar. So in, right now I would just stop. I'd put everything in a bowl instead of in the container. And then everybody would take their own bowls and make their own dip. And they do as much beans as they wanted, as much of each of the layers. So that is a great way to do it as a family event where if everybody doesn't have the exact same taste preferences, they can do it. You can have different versions of guacamole. You can have different salsas. You could have a salsa verde and the salsa, a tomato-based salsa. You could do all of the different options, different kinds of beans and have it a real party, just putting it all together. So I'm gonna grab the beans. Okay, so we've got the beans. And then I usually do the corn next. Okay, so we'll add the corn. And I'm being mindful of if there's any lemon juice or lime juice in the bottom, I'm not gonna pour it on because I don't want the extra liquid from there. All right. And then, and the beans have thickened up. I can see that. So I still have that liquid if I ever wanted to adjust that. And then I like to put the guac next because I want to make sure I cover the guac with the salsa so that it doesn't turn. Okay. Cause you know how guacamole sometimes can get a little bit dark. So if I've covered it with salsa, then, then we're in good shape. So I'm going to put some of the guacamole on. And I, like I had said, my husband loves guac. So he would like double, um, double, double, double of the guacamole, but you can make it as you wish and what makes more sense for your body. But it's so bright green and fresh. No matter if we were in the middle of winter, this works. And if you bring this somewhere, once we're actually getting back together, it will be gone before you know it. People will eat this up. And then we're doing salsa on top. Okay, get another spoon. All right. And I typically will cover the guacamole completely, like I said, but with this, I'm gonna leave the layer so that when I take a picture of it to share with Chef AJ that we'll see the beautiful green from behind the scenes here.
Yes, please uh, text me a photo because even, uh, you know, I'll, 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 I'll refer people to watch the replay that missed the live and that photo will definitely entice them. I have a couple more questions, if you don't mind. Gina wanted sure. to know if you could please show the jar of salsa again. And yes. Michelle wanted to know if the liquids that you're saving, like the liquids from the cooking and the aquafaba, do you freeze those? You can, absolutely. I'll probably make a soup um, out of, and then I freeze the soup, of course. This is the um, no salt added salsa. But yes, you can. I love making dressings with the aquafaba. So that's another option to do a salsa vinaigrette. But yes, you can freeze. So then I think I'll do a little bit of the fresh tomato and scallions. And then we'll end with the you could do fresh cilantro too, of course, but this beautiful scallions. And we always want onion every day in our bodies. So in all different ways, red onion, scallions, like I said, that whole allium family, garlic. Okay. Well, let's see. I'm gonna move the phone so you could see. So how does that look? Pretty tasty. Oh my God. Okay. That's <laughs> not fair, not fair. No, I know, I, if only you could taste. Now, I wanna talk about dippers. So I'm gonna set this aside for a moment. This is where it gets fun. as if it hasn't been fun already, but these are all kinds of dippers. And what you, the one that I don't have, which I use all the time is um, jicama. I love jicama. So I slice it up and put it into lemon juice and it sits in my fridge in marinating in lemon juice. And it is phenomenal, but I wanted to go beyond that today. So I want to do peppers. I want to do baby peppers and big peppers. I want to do zucchini. This I am so proud. I grew in our front yard. So we have some plants growing. We actually have everything in the front yard now is edible. And so I would love to come back and do something with my, um, I have purple tree collards in the front yard. So I have some great ideas about what we can do with those. Here's some banana peppers. And I have loved these banana peppers. This is something that I um, almost didn't grow, but I'm so glad that I did. They are very mild, they're crunchy, they're excellent. And they even turn a little orange, um, some of them do. And then I have some other peppers from um, the front yard and broccoli and cauliflower. And I remember being on a trip one day and I was hungry and I had to stop for something quick and there was a Walmart and I went into the refrigerator section and I remember buying a container of, it was a guacamole with salsa on top and a bag of cauliflower, carrots and broccoli. And that's what I used as the dippers because you know, when you have to grab something quick, sometimes, you know, your options are limited, but it was excellent. And I thought most people don't think about using cauliflower or broccoli as a dipper for something like a bean dip, but it's excellent. So I wanted to show you just quickly about the cauliflower. I mean, cauliflower, the uh, bell pepper. The way that I cut my bell pepper, because I don't like wasting any, is I cut off the top and I cut off the bottom and I don't throw those. Those are still perfect. So I'll cut those into pieces that can be dippers, right? So I've got those dippers. And then I slice down, see if we can see, one side. And then as I open it, I just roll it open. And then I get those inside pieces and, th and that's all I throw away. And now I have a full piece that I can slice into planks. Okay, so then we have beautiful planks. And even the top, I like to just pop out the very top green piece 
and then I'll cut this into pieces. Why throw away anything that's, you know, wonderful, beautiful, edible? The um, one that's waiting in the wings that I haven't mentioned, this has become, I don't know, it's kind of a tie between this and jicama. This makes fantastic chips. So what we're going to do is, that's it. That's all you have to do is cut. Now you can, this is the perfect chip for dip. And you may think, seriously, purple cabbage? Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. I don't know what makes it so amazing, but it is an excellent dipper. So we have a ton of options for zucchini. All we have to do is cut, we can cut rounds or we can cut planks. So that can be a chip. You can do half that size and that can be a chip, right? These are all excellent ideas and they're just, as Dr. Greger talks about, they're basically just water in vegetable form, right? Which is what we want for our bodies. Same thing with cucumbers. With this cucumber, which I didn't think my cucumber plants were gonna give me anything, but they did. Um, I would just do cucumber rounds. I think that's perfect. So those are great dippers. So I'm gonna assemble all of this and then send you a picture of it. But I think, I think we are done. I think we've really given you options for the dip layers, for dippers. And I think this is the perfect weekend to play yeah. with a seven layer dip. You have made me so incredibly hungry. It's just, I wish this was, I wish I had this. I, I'm going to eat lunch, but it's not going to be that. <laughs> no, but it could be tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. And I, I love purple cabbage. I love, you know, if you cut them into triangles, they, they are very chip-like and they're, they're delicious. They I never would have thought I, and it just, it, now it's my go-to and because the cabbage lasts so long in the fridge, you can always have it right at your fingertips. And it's so satisfying. Like we said, filling is really important. And to feel full is something that most people, they just, it's that happy full. It's not sick full. It's just satisfied. There's a raw restaurant in LA called the Sun Cafe and Ron Russell, the chef is going to be on the show in December. And when they make their nachos, the chips are purple cabbage and jicama, but they're shaped just like chips. Yes, by chips. And actually Ron was the one who told me about this food processor. He was doing, he used to own part of a restaurant in Sacramento and we were, I went to one of his classes and he said, we have $1,500 Roboku food processors that can't do what this little Hamilton beach can do in some situations. And so I thought, oh my gosh, raw restaurant, he knows about food processors and sure thing, it has been a dynamite. So yes, I'm so happy to hear that Ron's gonna be on the show. He doesn't come up here anymore because he doesn't have that restaurant, but um, I'll definitely tune in. Great, well, thank you so much. And please come back anytime. And thank all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 2 p.m. Pacific time today when we'll be talking to Sarah Benoit who empowers women in business, particularly on social media. And tomorrow at 11 a.m. we have Rowdy Girl. And at 5 p.m. we have a wonderful psychic. So we've got a great weekend of shows for you. And Sunday we have Dr. Gosh, I'm gonna botch her name, Erman. Erm Dr. Van Dyken. She is a beautiful yes. surgeon in Hawaii who is plant-based. Thanks again, Tim Marie. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Chef AJ. Take care, everybody.